Yo, what's good everybody? This is Clyde, and today I'm going to show you how to sidechain. Uh, sidechaining isn't just for EDM, it can also be applied towards hip-hop and R&B beats. Like I know, Party Next Door uses sidechain all the time on his beats. And that the main purpose of it is that it gives the kick more room and lets it hit harder in the track. So I'm going to play this beat without the sidechain, and uh, I want you to listen closely so you can tell the difference. Here's with sidechain. Sounds a lot smoother. And if you can't tell the difference, you gotta pay attention to the sample and to the 808. When it's sidechained, you can kinda hear the sample and the 808 fade in and out as soon as the kick comes in. So here it is again without sidechain. Now here's with sidechain. Alright, now you should be able to hear the difference. So we're gonna move on to sidechaining. Alright, so sidechaining. There's two ways that I know on how to sidechain. And the first one is simple, I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, I'm only gonna work with the sample so you can hear it better without all the other instruments. And on our sample mixer, we're gonna load up gross beats. And they already have a preset sidechain. But it sidechains at every beat. Listen. To get it where I had before, we would have to make it sidechain at every two beats. So I'm going to get rid of the points at the first and third beat. And now we have it like this. That's it, easy. And the only real way to adjust the side chain in gross beats is if you adjust the, the tension. So I'm gonna put the snap to one fourth, and then let's say I bring the tension to around 20%. Now it'll sound like this. Which in my opinion is better than if I drag the tension all the way down. This isn't the most effective way of how to sidechain. I'd really only use this if you wanted to like sidechain the beginning of your instrumental to get like an instrumental effect or um, an effect that you put on your pre-hook where most of your instruments doesn't play because it just doesn't work as well as the next way I'm going to show you. Otherwise, more than likely, you'll have a couple of times where you try and use gross beats and the kick in the sample or the low ends will all still clash together. So I'm going to mute gross beats. And for the next way to sidechain, I'm only going to sidechain the kick in the sample. And the first thing you want to do is kind of hard to remember. If you want the sample to sidechain with the kick, you have to select your kick mixer. And as you're still selected into the kick mixer, you're going to go to the sample mixer, but don't select it. You're going to right click on this up arrow and click on sidechain to this track. And now you see this string from the kick mixer linked to the sample mixer, which means that they're linked together. Then you wanna head over to your sample mixer and load up Fruity Limiter. Go to the compression stage and assign the sidechain to one. And now we got all these knobs to work with. The gain knob is pretty obvious, it's what can make the sound louder or quieter. Listen. But I usually leave it the way it already is. Saturation, I don't touch at all. Now the compressor threshold is what we're gonna work with. And uh, what this knob does is uh, triggers the compression of when the kick and the sample come together. In other words, is send the signal of the kicks to be sidechained with the sample. But you won't be able to hear a difference when I mess with the knob and I play with the beat. Listen. You 
can hear a difference at all. But what it does is shows the kick that is to be sidechained with the sample. Look at it. And to get the kick to sidechain with the sample, you gotta make sure your threshold knob is turned somewhat, it doesn't matter how much, otherwise you can't prepare the kick to be sidechained. And once I start adjusting the ratio knob, you'll start hearing the difference. So if I turn the ratio knob to the left, it makes the sample louder when the kick comes in. But we don't want that. We want it to sidechain. So we're gonna turn the ratio knob towards the right in order for it to compress when the kick comes in. So the more we turn the knob to the right, the more it will compress. And now that we can hear a noticeable difference, we can also go back and mess with the threshold knob. And you can hear the kick come in more, the more the knob is turning to the left, giving it an overall bigger compression. So at this point, there's no sure set of rule or a specific setting for what you should have your knobs at. It's more of something you gotta kinda hear and adjust it to kinda how you want it. So I'm just gonna play the beat and mess with the knobs until I get it to how I want it to sound or how compressed I want it to be. Okay, I like the way that sounds. The knee knob we could adjust, but I generally don't use it. But the purpose of it is that you can get the compression to gradually get louder or softer. But I don't want that kind of sound on this beat, so I'm not gonna mess with the knob at all. So the attack knob adjusts how quickly you want the compression to start with this the signal, which is the kick. And again, this is more of something you gotta kinda adjust the knob and listen to the track to get it how you want it. So the higher you adjust the attack knob, the slower the compression will start, which is basically kind of like the softer the compression will start. And I generally don't like to adjust the knob too much, just maybe add a little bit because I really like to hear the compression more and make the side chain more noticeable. So I bring it to about the one-ish area the one-ish area. Yeah, that's good to me. The release time is self-explanatory. It adjusts the release time of the compression when it comes in and out. So I'll adjust by ear. That's how I like the release time. Not, not too long, but not too short. And the head knob, we're gonna ignore. The curve setting, I leave at one, but Fruity Limiter comes with eight different curve settings, but honestly, you can achieve the same level of side chain on each curve if you adjust all the knobs properly. All right, so when you get the side chain setting to how you like it, a helpful tip is to save it as a preset. So we're gonna go to the click on this down arrow, Go to save preset as, and I already have one called standard 808 sidechain, but for this tutorial I'm going to call it example. Hit save. And now what we have is the sample and kick sidechain. But 
but what the problem is are other low end sounds. And if I were to turn on my sub bass, you'll hear the kick and the sub bass clash a lot. And it's not too bad, but it kind of makes it harder to hear the compression of the sample when the kick comes in. So I'm gonna side chain the sub bass to the kick. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did before. Select the kick channel, then go to the up arrow, right click, side chain to this track, go to our sub bass mix, load up fruity limiter, except this time we have the preset so we don't have to do all those steps again. So we're gonna load the preset. And now we got a side chain sub bass. And I could adjust the knobs again to get the sub bass sound exactly how I want it, but I'm, I'm not trying to make this video too long because that's all there is to it, the side chaining. I find the, the fruity limiter method to be the most effective way because you know my kick is not always gonna play at the same pace like I could have my kick come in at a different pattern and we'll still be able to hear the kick side chain to the 808 and the bass matter of fact we can see it That's why the Fruity Limited Way is better than Gross Beats. And that's basically it. You know, mess with Fruity Limiter to get to know the plugin better. Because, you know, the more you use it, the more you get used to it. And with that being said, I'm out.